Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Elmer Horn with Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and we're here in one of our communities, and Sheriff Pounds is here with us. And uh, Sheriff Pounds is very involved in his communities, and he come out. We brought out our grill and our smoker so we can come out and help cook for this community. And Sheriff Pounds himself has come out and, and helped cook with us, and he's here to cook and help these folks today. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am, this is one of the programs that I call taking my community back. If you don't get out there and get involved in your community, you ain't gonna be able to get it back. And the sad part about it, we losing our young men at such a pace that it's unreal. We got to come up with something that will help us with these children. Got to, so this is what I'm doing. I love it, I'm out here in the sun, it's hot, but like I said earlier, we're going to do these until we get that gap between law enforcement and the community bridge. We're going to bridge that gap because we're going to get out of here. We're going to shake hands. We're going to find out they got any kind of problem we can assist them with and invite them to the sheriff's office and come to the roll call. Just come see what's going on at the office. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Sheriff Pounds. And like I said, this is just one of many events that we bring this grill out to to help with our communities and get involved. Welcome to the John Sloan's Hour. Tonight's topic is what you need to know about building business credit. Tonight's guest is Coach Roy. Last time on the show, I received calls about him coming back. Here he is, and welcome back. Welcome Coach Roy back to the show. And tell us about yourself. Welcome back, man. Thank you, John. Tell us about yourself, man. Great to be here. Great to be here. How's everyone doing this evening? Uh, again, I'm Coach Roy, and um, the business credit building is one of my specialties. Uh, I've learned business credit through my own personal experiences. Uh, I was in the real estate profession over 27 years. I owned an ERA franchise for 20 years. Along the way, I did investments with car lots, clubs, um, uh, trucking companies, and things of that nature. And there's always an issue with businesses getting funded. You're told to write a business plan. Uh, do this, do that. You go to the bank, they tell you no. So I'm here tonight to give you some of the uh, jewels in terms of building business credit. So I, got a, I want to ask you a question. What is business credit? And how do I build my personal credit? Two different questions. Okay. What is business credit? Business credit is when you have a company, you are able to apply for finance to get the products, goods, services, or money you need as working capital. And you're doing it under your business name and your business EIN number, federal whatever you know it as. That's business credit. <clears throat> Personal credit. Personal credit? Yes. OK, you want to know what it is? What uh, is personal credit? Yes. Personal credit, as most of you very well know, is your name, social security number, and um, 
you're applying for credit, you're trying to get uh, extended terms, whether it be a car loan, a credit card, or a personal loan. That is personal credit. Okay, I like that. What I want you all to know is that um, Coach Roy's name is on there. He does credit repair as well. So when his name come up there, if you need your credit done, trust me, he, do, he does it real well. And I'm not just saying it because he's on the show, but he's a master at repairing credit. Because I know some of y'all have bad credit like me. Not everybody got good credit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I, have, <laughs> I have another question for you. Yes, sir. Um, can you separate business credit from your social security number? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I do. Um, when you separate your business credit from your social security number, your business credit have a federal ID number slash EIN, whichever you know it as. And your personal name has a social security number. So you want to build credit under those individual numbers and not use your social security number to get business credit and that's and not use your business credit you can use your business credit to get a lot of your personal items such as your homes your cars credit cards so on and so forth i know that uh the producer is going to put your name and information up there but i want to talk about personal credit repair can you give them how can they contact you with that you can contact me at 770-823 8550. Uh, my email is roy at coach-roy.com. Because I know a lot of my friends are going to be calling you because their credit is jacked up. So <laughs> since you know about credit, that's real, that's real talk. What is a personal guarantor? Let me step back okay. and deal with something of when you said I know about credit. Okay. Uh, one of the issues that we have when when you start talking about personal credit most people don't understand that little things like if you have a credit card and it's a ten thousand dollar limit most people think well i could use up to ten thousand dollars and as long as i pay the bill every month on time i'm good however you could only spend or at the time you could spend as much as you want but at the time that bill is due, you need to pay the card back down to 30%. Meaning, on the payment date, if you charge 7,000, you need to pay 4,000 so that on the due date, seven days later when it hits the bill roll, it will be at 30% of the $10,000. That's very important because Overutilization of that credit card will bring your score down. And that's something that I notice a lot of times in repairing credit, outside of them having a collection or a, a repossession or something like that, the credit cards that they do have is overutilized. So I have a question. I, you just said that, but again, my question is, because I'm trying to learn about credit as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So if I have a credit card for $2,000, that's and I spent um, $1,000, and I still have a balance of $1,000 left. What do you think I need to pay? You said 30%, but what would that 30% be? $600. So I would have to pay them $600. No, you, you need to pay $400 so that the balance is $600 okay. when you pay the bill. Okay. And then seven days later, the bill roll is going to report that $2,000 card with a $600 balance. And that will keep keep you keep them from your score from going down because of over overutilization of the car. I want you all to call in at, call in at 770-485-7724. Again, that number is 770-485-7724. Because y'all know y'all don't have good credit out there. Most of y'all don't have good credit, so you better call an actual professional <laughs> what to do in the situation. Okay, I got another. Uh, so what is a personal guarantor? A personal guarantor, that's when you guarantee the loan behind the business or behind someone else. That could be a personal guarantor that could be considered a co-signer. Co-signer. Exactly. Well, they just made it fancy, personal guarantor. 
Well, normally a guarantor is guaranteeing behind a business. Right, okay. But it's the same um, as a cosigner. Okay, that's, that's a good thing. I, I didn't know what a personal guarantor was. I'm glad you explained it to me. Like you said, it's just a cosigner. And, um, but you need to know if you personally guarantor behind a company, it won't show up on your credit report unless they default. And if they default, then they're coming after you, the person who guaranteed behind the loan. So if I'm a guarantor, you just said that, if I'm a guarantor and this gentleman, whoever I guarantor, whoever I was a co-signer for, he's late. He's late on his payments, maybe 30 days late. Will it affect the guarantor? No. At that point, it will not show on the guarantor's credit. Only after the uh, loan go into default or the credit card go into default. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. And another point is, is that let's say that you guarantor behind a company credit card and the credit card is 10000 I'm going to use the same scenario. The credit card is 10000 You put 7000 on the card. Well, with, with a business, it does not of the utilization does not affect the credit score on a business card. So you actually can max that card out or those cards out. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, you can actually max those cards out. Absolutely. And do, do you have to pay the 30%? No. So what would be the difference in the cards like that? Well, uh, Business, the, the Bureau reports business credit different from personal credit. Right. So on the business credit profile, the utilization does not affect your score, the business score. Mm, okay. So That's why you see a lot of information on YouTube saying, uh, let them show you how to uh, get business loans and have 0% interest. What they're really talking about is paying their, either paying their account off before 30 days and you're not using, get interest is not being charged, or you have some cards that you get and for the first six months or the first year, they don't charge interest. So if you stack the cards, that's what they mean by credit stacking. If you stack the cards, then you are able to take the balances and roll them over to the next card. Therefore, you're not paying any interest. So my question is, like, I've gotten some cards that, you know, my credit's getting better, but I've gotten some cards where uh, they want to charge me 35% interest, right? Correct. So I, I know that that's how, is that 35% on the 35 cents on the dollar? What is the 35%? What does that mean? It's the annual percentage rate. So that's... 35% basically on the amount you charge. Because I've seen them at 29%, 35%. You well, know. you can get them as low as 7 or 8%. It depends on your credit. Your credit, yeah. And, and, and the other misconception about credit is a lot of people like to look at their score. You could have a 740, but you can go down to the bank and apply for something, and they say you don't have enough credit. What do they mean by it? my credit score is 740? So my, I've been paying all my bills. So I'm, I'm asking them, what do you mean my, my, I don't well, have good credit? Because your credit score could be 740, but you may have two accounts. You may have a $1,000 credit card, and you may have a bill that you pay $100 on. They may be the only two things on your credit. Oh, so, they so I call that mm -hmm. an in, inflated score. It has no substance. So you have to have several open accounts that, that, that you're you paying have a, on. You have to have a credit mixture. And in having that credit mixture, you got some credit cards, you got some uh, installment loans, car payment, real estate loans. You have to have a mixture. And then to include the credit cards you receive and where you get the loan from is weighted. And what I mean by weighted it's a difference if I look at an account and it's from Bank of America versus 
it being from one main financial, uh, quick credit, uh, commercial credit, or some of the uh, lenders that's loaning you the money, but they're charging you high interest rates. Mm. What, uh, so the interest rate, it varies from person to person depending on their credit, am I correct? It varies from institution to institution depending on your credit. You said something to me one day that, and I don't know if this has to do with credit, but you, I was asking you a question. You was trying to explain something to me one day. You said uh, that if a person is a mechanic, right? Remember this conversation we had because it stuck with me. If a person is a mechanic and they can fix a car like that, they can fix it in their sleep. And, and you said to me that that doesn't necessarily mean that they can open up their own business, being a mechanic. So again, I'm going to ask you, for them, why is that? <laughs> you got a good memory. <laughs> yeah, I got a good memory. Well, I used that analogy that day with you because I wanted you to understand that everyone that goes into business, a lot of times they fail. And they don't fail because they don't, they, they don't know their product or they don't know what they're doing. They don't understand there's a business side to business. The analogy that I used was I, I've ran into people that were mechanics and they could actually listen to your car and determine what's wrong with it and fix it. And people will say to them, hey, man, you should open your own mechanic shop. That's a whole nother skill set. That skill set requires you to understand your company structure. How should I set up? Everybody go on YouTube and, and the internet and say, hey, I need a C LLC to protect my assets. And it protects your assets, but it's a limited liability company is what LLC is. So now that you're asking the guy who's a mechanic that fixed cars to understand his legal structure. And in understanding your legal structure, you need to understand how that works tax-wise. Then in addition to that, you need to they need to understand how to set up the accounts, uh, get the, the, uh, the parts at discounted rates, uh, get their EIN, open their business account, uh, work the computer to keep up with their records for accounting. That is a small business owner nightmare because they can't afford to pay for the different services in the beginning. To include, they don't have any business credit. So they use their personal social security number to fund this business. By the time they start making money, they have now taken lates on the social security uh, number under, the, under their name because they've been trying to fund their business. So it's a process, it's a skill set for you to be able to do that. And uh, unfortunately, most people are not willing to pay for that knowledge prior to starting their business, or they're not willing to pay as they go. So that's when a consultant, if you have the money, but a consultant would come in and help you with all this other business that you're going to. Because like you said, I would have no knowledge. All I know how is to fix cars. That's, the, uh, that's all I know. You said, I got to know account receivable. I got to keep up with my, with my math, my, my, my finances. I got to keep up with many things. And I don't have that skill set to do that. So I would need a consultant? Absolutely. And you would need several consultants, not just one. I don't have that money for that. <laughs> well, it depends. You, you, you may be able to barter. Uh, met a young lady this past uh, week. Um, she has a, a, a real good concept. She's, has, she's an HR consultant. Mm -hmm. You need that as well. Because if you're not structured right with a small business, little things like not paying on a timely manner can get you in trouble. You know? Uh, it's, it's so many things come with small businesses. It's unbelievable. And it stated that small businesses fail in the first two years, am I correct? Or I, did I get that right or did I get it wrong? Uh, I don't know the statistic on that, but I'd like to say they fail in the first nine months. Why would you say that? Because they're underfunded. 
when you're underfunded, you can, you, it's hard for you to stay in business because you have to understand, you have two houses. Think about it. The, your current rent, car payment, lights, phone, cell phone bill, whatever obligations you have with your family, that you have that as well as your business venture. You have to, you got rent, lights, phone, uh, supplies. And so you have two households. Yeah, so a person would really, to open up a business, a person would really have to take a look at what they're doing. They would have to have some common, common sense. And what about the SBA, the Small Business Association? You, that, don't, you don't qualify for the loan. I don't qualify for the loan, why not? Because you need two years of tax returns. Mm. You, didn't, you hadn't made it to that point yet. So two years of tax return on that business? Correct. Wow, I didn't know that. Small Business Association, SBA? Yeah, I heard that. This well, if you're loaning money to a business, you need you loan it to the business. Well, the business had, doesn't have any financials. Well, this is what I thought. You're probably right. So I know, I guess in New York, but all over, you go to the Small Business Association and say, listen, I'm, I'm ready to start up a business. You give them your, your plans, your business plans. And at that point, will they, they would take that in consideration with the underwriter about giving you a loan? Or how does that work? Yeah, um, <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I'm going to keep it simple. All right. Um, just, just think of it this way. You have a business plan. Yeah. You hadn't made any money. A lender want to know that you have the ability to pay back. And a business plan doesn't guarantee the ability to pay back. Right. It's just a business plan. This is what you plan to do. This is what your anticipations are. This is what your market research says. But at the end of the day, you hadn't made a dollar. <laughs> so I'm not going to loan you any money. Wow. And again, this keep going back to the point I'm trying to make. Okay. The point I'm trying to make, businesses are undercapitalized. And I've seen people who have $100,000 to put in a business, and they are still out of business in a year. Because it isn't always just having the money. You got to have the proper structure. You need the person who understand HR, the, under, the person who can set up the payroll so that they can come out. You got to have the person who understand the proper procedures for a fire and hire. You got to have the accountant that understands the tax ramifications behind an INC versus a LLC and whether you got partners and all the different things that have nothing to do with the product or the service you provide. Notice, every, go back to the mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. The stuff we're talking about have nothing to do with fixing cars, but it requires money and knowledge. And you have to pay these people to provide that service for you. Absolutely. Wow, that's, that's... If you're planning to be successful. Well, leading right into this question is, how long does it take to build business credit? You can build business credit. Most people are familiar with Dun and Bradstreet and Paydex scores. You can build a pay, I could build a Paydex score in less than 30 days. But it depends on what you are trying to obtain with business credit. So building business credit, the, 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 the 30, 20, 60 day net 30 accounts, they can be gotten in the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about getting fuel cards, uh, credit cards, buying cars in your name, put houses in your name, that's a whole nother process. It's levels to it. It's three tiers to it. So on an average, within 120 days, uh, based on the way that I build business credit, you can do a lot of things because when I'm building your business credit, I'm actually working with your personal credit as well. Yeah, it was funny. Because at some point, mm -hmm. that personal credit is considered, whether it's indirectly or directly. Because as you're getting these net 30s, next 60s, and these small accounts, 
sometimes they're going to ask you for your social. Most people refrain from giving the social because everyone who I run into that's trying to establish business credit outside of their social got bad personal credit. So I've learned to start taking care of some of the personal credit because, again, some companies is going to ask for that social for verification purposes. And though they say, oh, we just want to verify who you are mm -hmm. and that uh, I guess you're the owner of the company, on the articles of incorporation, whatever the case may be. But it's hard for me to believe that they don't take into consideration the negative items they see on your credit report. Mm. It's funny. I was going to go right into something you just said. Can I purchase a car with my, my business in my business name? Sure you can. Once the profile is built up enough, you can purchase a car in the business name. You can purchase a house in the business name. There's a program that uh, I was introduced to uh, about 18 months ago, and I introduced you to in the last month or so on, right. on September the 8th, where you could actually purchase a house in your company name without uh, the financials, without two years tax returns and year-to-date profit and loss that you would normally have to turn into a bank or a mortgage company. So we have a source that you could do an LLC today and buy an investment property tomorrow if you got the down payment. Can we like talk about the net on the other side? Can we talk about the kill uh the core lending company? I mean, we need to do a show on that. We need to do a whole show on that? Yes. That that is not something that we can tread lightly with. We'll, we'll do a whole show on that. I'll come back. And we do one on Sequoia Linda. Okay. Um, also, can I? You said you already said I can purchase a home in my, my business name. Absolutely. Do it have to be an X amount of money? I mean, it doesn't matter how much how much the house costs, or how do I go about to do that? Well, purchasing it in your business name, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have anything to do with the cost of the house, but it has something to do with the down payment. Because if you do it under Sequoia Lending, mm -hmm. it could be 15 or 20 percent down. But that's a good thing because now you don't have what's called PMI insurance, private mortgage insurance. Oh, wow. and, and that's what most people who can come up with 20 percent, that could, depending on the price of the house, it could be anywhere from 100 to 300 dollars less a month by not having private mortgage insurance. Um, I want to go back to uh, credit repair for one minute. Just, uh, okay. I know it depends on how much stuff you have on your credit, but how, uh, if you have, how much time do it take, basically, to clean up a person's credit? I mean, it varies from person to person, I got that, but more or less, how much time would, uh, would a person that don't have too, too much bad of a credit, how, much, how long does it take to fix that credit? It can be fixed in 30 to 45 days, um, but it has nothing to do with how much. Mm -hmm. It has more to do with how much did that customer communicate on those bad accounts with that particular lender. For example, it's an inside joke in the credit community that the person that uh, make payment arrangements, answer the phone, um, made, tried to make the credit right, but still ran into a bind. It's hard to get that negative account off that person's credit report. But the person who don't answer the phone, don't open the mail, don't make any uh, uh, payments, change their phone number, <laughs> or answer the phone and say it's not me, it's easy to repair their credit. Wow. Wow, you would think, wow, that's crazy, because you would think if, if I'm trying to make arrangements to pay my credit, you would think that they would take that in consideration. But I understand you're saying, if you just don't answer the phone, <laughs> just don't get the mail, change your phone number, then that makes sense because they can't get in contact with you, right? Absolutely. And then when it's challenged through the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it's easy. 
they, we couldn't get in touch with him. <laughs> so that, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. That makes a lot of sense. I'm not telling y'all not to answer the phone because we know some of y'all got bad credit. So I'm not asking y'all not to answer the phone. Don't change your phone number. Don't do nothing. I'm not saying that. But it, it, that's a way you can get better credit. <laughs> That's the way you can get better credit, though. But no, uh, I, I, I like that. That that made that made a lot of sense. What else? If what other information can you give us to help the brothers and the sisters out here <laughs> with the uh, personal credit? Yeah, with the personal credit. Well, um, there are a lot of. I give you a couple of companies out there. One is called Credit Strong. Credit Strong has uh, a um, account. They actually have several. <laughs> Personal and business. Hold on. John Sloan Show. How may I help you? Who's calling? Yeah, this is uh, Rufus. Hey, Mike Rufus. Davis. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Yeah, Can you hear me? I'm loving the information the brother is giving. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, do you love the information he's giving us? Hold on. I'm loving the information. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm trying to see if we can hear you. Hold on a second. No problem. Put that mic on there. Yeah, let me put this mic on so I can hear you, man. Hold on a second. Um, let, let me ask you a question, uh, Brother Rufus. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, we getting ready to go on commercial break. Can you call us back? Because we got we have some technical difficulties right now with this phone. So I would no like problem. to hear what you're going to no say, problem. okay? There you go. No okay. Here you go on the phone now. Hello? Hey, okay, all right. Go ahead now. Yeah, I was, I was just I was just voicing my opinion on the show so far that, you know, the information he's given up is definitely good information because a lot of people don't answer the phone because they're scared. Not knowing is better for them in the long run. Absolutely. How is your credit? I appreciate it. <laughs> my credit is, is pretty decent. I'm just waiting to do the right thing with it and not do nothing foolish like buy a car. Do you do you answer the phone when you know they calling? <laughs> do you answer the mailbox? I don't I don't have nobody chasing me right now, but I know there's a lot of people with the PPP loans and all that's getting those calls. So I'm I'm pretty sure the best thing for them to do is don't answer. <laughs> As Brother Rufus was saying, thank you for calling in. He was saying that um, the information that I'm giving out is good information and that a lot of people don't realize that by not answering the phone, how it really benefits them in the long run. So, yeah. Thank you, Brother, for calling in. I know that, but thank y'all for answering. And y'all continue having a great show and um, keep doing it. Okay. Thank you, man. Right. We appreciate you. Thank you for calling. Always. That pink shirt hot, too. <laughs> Later, man. <laughs> let, let, me, let, I, let me get this in right quick. I was, on a I was referencing Credit Strong. Uh, that is a company that can help build your credit. That, that is a company that can help build your credit. They have several different type of accounts. The one I like is where you pay the 20 or $25 and it really becomes a savings account and it end up being a bank out in texas and it actually reports to your credit report as a a, a permanent uh, trade line john sloan's hour who's speaking hello hello hey what's going on john this is dwight hey dwight how you doing brother okay i, I want to i want to ask the brother a question when he finished talking go yeah. ahead Okay. Okay, I must be on some kind of delay. Um, good evening, Coach Roy. My name is Dwight Walsh and, 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 and my question is, what's your what's your what's your view on like the various debt reduction services and everything that they have available? Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm kinda negative to the various debt reduction services and here's the reason why. They'll, they'll, for instance, you'll have accounts that have interest on them. They will call your creditors, negotiate with the creditors for you to make, they'll consolidate, but they, they won't pay the creditors their interest. So they'll reduce the payment. So you're taking hits 
those 30 day hits when you when you do those type of projects. At the end of paying all the debt off, you still have bad credit. So you still have to call someone like me. So I would rather you uh, try and make the payments and if you can't make the payments, just let them go. If they're unsecured uh, things that they're not attached to a uh, car or a house or something like that, it's nothing they can do, so let it go back. Then get a hold of a credit repair person and let them take it off. Hello, Dwight? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was listening to him on TV, too. I, I, I'll be in touch with, with Coach Roy in the very near future. Okay. Thank you for taking Look, my call. Look forward we appreciate to that. Friend. Take care, Dwight. All right. Uh, right now, we're going to go on break, and we'll see you on the other side. All right? All right. Hi, I'm Chief Gary Sparks with the Douglasville Police Department. Today we want to give you some safety tips concerning traffic stops. Take a look. So you look in your rear view mirror and see flashing blue lights. What do you do? Remain calm. Yield to the right and pull your vehicle over into an off-road area that is safe for both you and the officer. Put your car in park. Remove your foot from the brake and turn the radio off. Remain in your vehicle. Have your driver's license readily available for the officer. Keep your hands on the steering wheel, visible for the officer at all times. If you need to retrieve any items from the interior, explain what you're reaching for to the officer and avoid any sudden movements. Rolling the window down completely establishes a level of trust with the officer and allows for ease of interaction during the routine traffic stop. Be courteous and polite. Be cooperative and willing to follow the officer's instructions. During a routine traffic stop, the officer will return to his vehicle to run the tag and driver's license verification and complete a citation if one is necessary. Once the officer returns and approaches your vehicle, whether or not a citation or warning is issued, please remain calm, courteous, and cooperative. Sign the citation acknowledging you agree to appear in court and do not dispute the citation with the officer. The officer will give you a court date to explain or defend your infraction. Okay, ma'am, like I told you, I did clock you at 51 in a 35 mile per hour speed zone. I did issue a citation, okay? This here is gonna be your court date. I just need a signature from you stating that you received a copy of this citation, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Here's your driver's license. Thank you. Along with a copy of the citation, okay? Do you have any questions or concerns for me? No, sir. Okay, well, you have a nice day, okay? Thank you. Thank too. you. Following these few simple steps will help ensure a safe interaction for both you and the officer. I hope these few tips help you as it relates to dealing with law enforcement and traffic stops. Not only in traffic stops, but in all it encounters with law enforcement. We hope that all our encounters are safe for the citizens as well as for our officers. Again, we want you to be safe and if you have any problems with the Douglasville Police Department, don't hesitate to give us a call and make your concerns known. I would add that Georgia is a right to carry state and we hope that if you are carrying that on these traffic stops and all encounters please let the officer know that you are carried. This will ensure your safety and our officer's safety. Thank you, may God bless you, and may God keep our community safe. We are one. Hi, my name is Lauren and welcome to TV 1061. Join our network and broadcast your film live across the continent. 
Come to our studio and film and stream your TV show, sitcom, and showcase and broadcast it worldwide. Combine multimedia with your live stream. Independent filmmakers, show your movie and afterwards interview your cast live. Sponsors, advertisers, I'm talking to you. This is your chance for global exposure. These are exciting times that we're in. Traditional TV is but a thing of the past. TV 1061 is on the Roku platform. Roku is an industry leader in internet TV. It has a viewership of 53 million and counting. It is the most popular and fastest growing internet TV platform. If you are interested in developing and showcasing your movie or show, or interested in coming in as a sponsor or advertiser, please send us your contact information with a brief description of your interest to 1061tv at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you and welcome back. I would like to thank my producer, Felix Washington. He does an excellent job, does a good job. But before we get into anything else, Coach Roy, but when we went on break, he was, he was saying something, man. Can you, do you, can you complete that thought? Uh, yes, I was elaborating on the benefits of a, of a company called Credit Scrum. And like, once again, they have uh, business trade lines where you are able to pay a fee per month and it's reported on your report and you would pay on it for 24 months. But at the end of the 24 months, you would get the money because it was put in a savings account. Excellent program. That will build a personal trade line. I know most of you are familiar with um, uh, someone putting you on their credit card and making you an authorized user. That account will help raise your credit score. But remember, that gets back into the fictitious score, but it's still good to put them on there. But you have to be very careful when you're on someone's account. You need to make sure they understand the 30% rule. Because if not, that authorized user account that doesn't have any lates can still hinder your credit rather than help the score rise. So uh, Credit Strong is a good source, and also getting a secured credit card is a good source. Capital One has those cards, your local credit union has those cards, and the, your, your credit line becomes the amount that you can put down. If you can put down $300, then you got a $300 secured card. $500, you got a $500 secured card. Some lenders will allow you to put up to $5,000 on a card. So it gives you a $5,000 uh, uh, trade line on your credit report. So it's always good to use uh, the secure cards, um, credit strong, and authorized users when you're rebuilding your credit. So I have a question that you see these people on TV. Let me see. The last one I seen was they was remodeling a shower and they tell you you don't have to pay for two years. No interest for two years. How does that go, man? Well, that's uh, someone with uh, excellent credit. When you got good credit, those are the benefits you get. So if I don't have good credit, they're not talking to me about <laughs> <laughs> No, they're not talking to you. They're not talking to me <laughs> about at all. paying in two years? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, well, won't, you won't qualify. Before. Okay, here's a <laughs> Well, wow, that's deep. You said I won't quote. But here's a question. Tell us 
Tell us about a few pitfalls for people who are trying to build their business credit. Well, uh, a lot of uh, small business owners looking at YouTube, looking online, talking to different people, they're trying to build their business credit. Well, there's a lot of pitfalls. First of all, most, L most people who get an LLC and go to their home address. Red flag. Mm -hmm. Most of them have a Gmail or Yahoo account. Red flag. Most of them don't have a website. Red flag. Um, most of them don't know what Dun and Bradstreet is, and even if they set it up, it's going to pick up that home address. Red flag. So, listening to all this advice you get on these YouTube channels, it's a process. And then if you had all that stuff right, there's a sequence that you apply for these different net 30s, net 60s, when you get to the point that where you want to get a, a, a Dell account, an Apple account, um, a, a gas card, a Visa, a MasterCard, Platinum card, whatever the case may be, there's a process and a sequence. And then sometimes when you're trying to get these cards, these uh, creditors, they have little things that they do. One may send you an email. You respond to the email. Then they may send a text to your phone. You respond to the text. Then they may give you a call. If you verify all of that, then two, three days later or seven days later, you end up with a card in the mail. Wow. Um, you know, when I first when I got my first car, I'll never forget it. It was Am Amco, uh, a gas card. Absolutely. Right? Man, I used that gas card. <laughs> I used that gas. <laughs> I used that gas card so much. Uh, I, I kind of messed up my credit in the beginning because I was, you know, I was filling up the car with gas all the time. I had no money while I was filling up the. So if you do get a gas card, <laughs> take it from me. You got to be very careful about using that gas card because, and the way prices are today in gas. Listen, and you talk about that thirty percent. You got to pay at least thirty percent. <laughs> no, not pay thirty percent. You got to keep your balance. The balance, okay. At thirty percent or less when you pay the bill. And when you use that gas card, it's hard to do that. <laughs> For me, anyway. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, man. <laughs> well, you have to have a system. You gotta write down all your, your credit card bills, write down the, the pay dates that they're due, write down the credit limit, and next to the limit, multiply that by 30%, and you'll know the amount. So okay. if it's a $10,000 card, you know that, at the, and, it, and, and the bill is due on the fifth of the month, you know that that card on the fifth of the month, and you write over to the side, you got to bring that balance down to $3,000. So uh, at the, <coughs> on the fifth, if that card is at $5,000, you need to pay $2,000 to make sure it reports at $3,000, which is 30% of the $10,000. I'm glad you're here because you told me a lot. I'm going to write it down, my little credit cards, right? I'm going to do everything you suggested. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm going to build up my credit. I'm a credit is all right, but it can stand some building up, though. But I like that was great. That's great information that you gave me. But what is a selfie? Selfie is a, another company uh, similar to uh, Credit Strong, the company I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay. And with Selfie, um, it allows you to open an account. And uh, I have a Selfie account, by the way. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think I pay $35, something like 35 or 25 I want to say $35. And you pay it for, I think that account is 12 months. And at the end of the 12 months, you will have seven or $800 in the savings account. Okay. But it's a trade line that's reported on your credit report now. And as that, as the months go by and you're paying the $35, it helps raise your credit score. Oh, wow. In addition to that, after three or four payments, you, depending on what your score is, you qualify for a selfie credit card. And whether it be secured or 
unsecured. You get a card, and, it, and eventually the unsecured card or the secured card becomes an unsecured card. So it's a good program as well. Credit Strong, Selfie. So he Two said excellent programs. Credit I Strong and Selfie. I guess you can Google the addresses of self, uh, Selfie and Credit Strong, you said? Absolutely. Credit Strong. Um, what are the names of the three credit bureaus, man, and how do they operate? Well, I mean, it's Equifax, uh, which is headquartered here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. There's Experian, which is in... Check, man, you threw me off with that one. I want to say Experian's in, in uh, California. And there's TransUnion in, in uh, Pennsylvania. But the reason I'm trying to give the geographical locations is because I want people to understand they are three separate businesses. They have different rules. So when people say my credit, they need to know the score of each bureau. You could actually have a 700 score on Experian, but have a 600 on Equifax and a 550 on TransUnion. Because your creditors don't always report to all three. And you could, you could have a situation where the, I noticed that Experian tend to have a lot of credit cards. TransUnion tend to have a lot of uh, uh, car loans. And uh, Equifax, depending on whether you're dealing with a local credit union or what have you, Equifax tend to have car loans or, or things in the southeast region, business that you're doing in the southeast region. So a lot of times it's hard to have the same credit score across the board. Well, and a lot of people don't realize that. Okay. Well, thank you. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back in a minute, okay? Thank you. A reliable source of CBD products. Introducing Holistic Wellness Boutique, a revolutionary collection of CBD tinctures, CBD topicals, CBD edibles, CBD pet products, and other relevant CBD products that help you incorporate CBD into your everyday lifestyle. The best part? Through our special Radiant Transformations program, Dr. Alea Daniel, Barn D, a well-regarded wellness coach, licensed pharmacist, and the mind behind the idea of Holistic Wellness Boutique, will also introduce you to a healthier lifestyle through proper education, nutrition, and a thorough medication evaluation to make the most of our exemplary CBD products. If you are struggling with a chronic condition, we can help you discover how to live a more holistic lifestyle through wellness coaching and the proper selection of hemp-derived CBD products. Visit HolisticWellnessBoutique.com to schedule a consultation or order an audacious combination of hemp-derived CBD products that will rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. Today's world exposes our youth to life experiences that are well beyond that which their years should allow. Violence, trauma, poverty, injustice. Our children's lives and their livelihoods are in constant danger. Wisdom Inc. is a community-based organization designed to save young lives by reducing violence and assisting youth in their personal development. Wisdom stands for wise individuals structuring and developing youthful minds. Through our collective wisdom, we can change lives for the better. Wisdom Inc. Reducing violence, developing youth, saving lives. Welcome back to the John Sloan's Hour. I have a question that I'm going to ask Coach Roy, and I'm sure that the audience would like to know this. Do businesses use the same three bureaus? Yes, they do. Uh, Experian and Equifax have a business side as well as the personal side. And then in addition to that, they have, you have Dunn and Bradstreet, and you also have another bureau called Credit Safe. But yeah, they basically use the same bureau. 
Different department, same bureau. So why wouldn't your creditors report to all three at the same time? Wouldn't it make it easier for one person to have his credit reported to all three, him or her, have the all three reported to the same credit bureau? Good question. Uh, what most of you don't know, if you are a company that's extending credit to the public, is that, first of all, you have to pay a membership fee to be able to pull credit and to report on your clients that is paying to you. And every month that you report, it's a fee. It may be 50 cent, it may be a dollar, mm -hmm. but what is it if you got a million customers? It can be quite expensive. Very expensive. So therefore, they, they, don't, they don't report to all three bureaus. Some of them report to two, some report to one, some report, report to all three. And if you look at your credit report very closely, some companies don't report every 30 days. You could actually, if you have a monitoring service, you would actually notice that sometimes some companies report in every 60 days. I can see why the audience wanted you to come back on the show, man. You're very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable. Thank you. All right, I want you to know that. But what is the same alternative credit that you can report to the credit bureau? What is some alternative credit? What are some alternative credit that you can report to the credit bureau? OK, OK. Um, for those of you who have monitoring service, and I know Experian in particular, they now have a system where they call it um, credit boost. I think I've even seen some advertisement on commercials about the credit boost. And what credit boost is, they will allow you to report your utilities, cell phone, and things of that nature on your Experian profile, and it will actually boost your credit score. So, question. Mm -hmm. You said Experian, you just said one. It wouldn't go, you couldn't do that for all three? I'm not sure about the other three, but I know Experian provides that opportunity. So, in other words, let me, let me get this right, because I always mess the package up. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I pay my rent on time, my cell phone, and what else? Rent, cell phone? Just utility bills. Utility bills. Water, I, lights, all right, gas. So reiterate that again, because I'm a little slow. I got to get that, because I might have to utilize that. <laughs> well, I mean, when you, when you pay for the monitoring service of Experian, yeah. it's right there on the dashboard. In other words, you can click the button, and you can boost your credit score. And what they do is they verify the accounts through your bank statement. So if you are paying those bills off of your uh, checking a savings account, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. maybe even credit card as well, th what they actually do, you would actually log into that account and the system, experience system will go in and locate those uh, payments and you will get credit for it, especially if you can show where you're paying it every month. That's deep. How do you know so much about this, man? How I know so much is a uh, true story. I got my real estate license in 1986. Mm -hmm. When I got licensed, um, the, the brokers told us to go out there, find a buyer, uh, send them to the bank, and if the banks say that they qualify, then go show them a house and sell them a house. That's back in the day when we had to put you in the car and ride you around. Right. And make appointments with the people who own the home so that we can show it. Okay. Okay, these new realtors got it made. Uh, but in the midst of doing that, everybody that I sent to the bank or credit union, they were being told no. So... One day I was sitting at my desk and I had 75 people. And out of 75 people, I had 10 people that I'd actually shown houses to. And nine of those 10 people bought a house from somebody else. Now those are some astounding numbers. Right. So I reversed the game. I called all those bad, bad credit people and I made appointments with them. And I asked them to bring in their denial letters. 
Right. I took those denial letters and looked at it. every reason they gave them for not being able to own a house. Mm -hmm. From credit to debt to income ratio. And I started figuring stuff out like you may be a male, you're trying to buy a house, they say the debt to income off, but I look at your check stub and it's showing where $100 a week coming out of your check for child support. That's $400. Mm -hmm. So I told you to go, I told my customer to go to Human Resource, take that child support off, but every Friday you or your wife run to the courthouse and pay because I don't need you to get locked <laughs> up. Yeah, now I get it. we took that deal to another lender and they got in their house. Wow. So back then, Nolan Richardson was the coach for Arkansas. Okay. I'm a big basketball guy. Okay. And coach Nolan, Roy, no, no, Nolan Richardson had a system called 40 Minutes of Hell, where he would press a team from one end of the court to the other. So what I did was I, I told my clients, and my motto was, call Roy and start packing. And my motto was, in order for you, me to do business with you, you got I had a list of everything that the bank asked for. Mm -hmm. And you and your wife, or whoever's going, mama, daddy, whoever's going to make a decision on this house, I need y'all to come to my office. I need you to bring all this documentation, and I'm getting ready to put a full court press on you. So I was practicing with you so that you will know exactly what the lender is going to do. Okay. And if you can handle my press, we're going to close. Your full court press. Full court press. <laughs> Everybody know what full court press is. You got a full court press, boy. You got to be really good to, to get back down court, man. Wow, that's, that's, that, that's great. So with that being said, that's how I learned so much about credit, so much about finance, and, uh, and, and, and uh, to include my ex-wife my, was a underwriter with Bank of America. You know, so she had all the underwriting books. So I took the books, got her to bring them home. I made copies of it and studied it. You self, you a self-made person, huh? Oh yeah. You had told me something. You owned a, um, you owned a, a real estate company. You had about 140 people working for you. Yes. Something like, did I get that right? That's correct. I ain't messed that up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate on that just briefly, Matt? Well, I mean, basically. Um, when I got into real estate, my intent was to be an investor to fix and flip properties. Right. So I said, I need to get a real estate license. When right. I got the real estate license, it was about law and contract law. When I stepped out into the field, it was about listing a house for a seller, getting a seller to understand what it takes and, and feel comfortable that I can sell their house. And then it was about buyers getting them to feel comfortable that I can find them a house. But I took finding them a house to another level by educating them on the buying process. So when I developed the full court press, if I sold you a house and your uncle or auntie want to buy a bigger house or hadn't bought a house and they come to the house warmer, I would be there with a pocket full of cards. And they would pull me off to the side and say, you sold John a house? You the guy sold John a house? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to make an appointment with they him. They want one too, huh? <laughs> yeah. but, but let me ask because you. Because people Sorry. equate buying material things and houses and cars based on status. Right. And how much money they make versus how much you make. Or we sit side by side in the cubicle and make the same money, but they have a... $200,000 house, but I sold you a $400,000 house. But they don't understand debt to income and all the other variables that come with that. You probably do make the same money, but you probably have a, two car payments in your household, mm -hmm. paying seven, dollars $800 a piece. Mm -hmm. John may have one car payment for six hundred, dollars and his wife may not have a car payment at all. That alone qualifies you for more house. But I wanted to say again, because we spoke about you doing credit repair. Can you give everybody that number again if they're interested in getting that credit repaired by you? Uh, it's 770-823-8550. And that's coach-roy.com. 
and the email is Roy at coach-roy.com. Can you give them that number again? Because you know we don't keep pens around us, so they're looking for a pen. <laughs> give us that telephone number again, man. 770-823-8550. That's if you got, you know you got bad credit, you better contact Coach Roy so he can help you out. I'm getting ready to contact Coach Roy myself so he can help me out with my, my credit, boy. But no, this as, is great, as, man. As a matter of fact, I know this is on the screen. They just put it on screen. Okay. That's great. That's okay. great. Okay. You know what I mean? That's great. But uh, anything you want to tell them before we get off the air, man? Um, just give us a call, and me and my team will take care of you, whether it's personal credit or business credit. You know, so you can see why I asked him to come on the show. He's very knowledgeable about business and credit and stuff like that. I'm going to have to read up on some books. I'm going to do my research. You always tell me I do research. <laughs> I'm going to have to do my research and read up on that stuff, man. But I want to thank my uh, producer again, Felix Washington, for producing a great show. I want to thank Coach Roy for being here today, um, expounding on credit, uh, business credit, personal credit, and things like that. Because we all do know that we need to have a good credit score or a decent credit score to help us go to another level. Let, let me say one thing. Go ahead, man. You always make me say something. Go ahead, man. You know that's what I do. He going to do his research. Well, some of the tricks of the trade I can't put in a book. So he's only going to get 80% of what he need to know about credit. So I'm not going to know too much, man? No, nah, you're not going to know what it needs to so take. So I got to come to Coach see, Roy? See, see, Coach Roy take off bankruptcy. We take off car payments. We take off foreclosures. We take off uh, uh, all the bad credit cards. I definitely got to come to you. I we take all off that. the collections from uh -oh. hospitals wow. and so on and so forth. Wow. So... It, we, it, and it, you can't write that in a book. What do I got to do to get that to come to you? What do I got to do, man? What you got to do? Yeah. Well, you just... No, I got to get my credit score. On the, I got to get my credit bureau. I mean, I got to get my credit report, right? Well, once you talk to me, I give you a particular monitoring service I want you to purchase. Okay. And you keep that service for at least six to nine months. Yes. But once you get used to the service, you're going to understand why I have mine permanently. And I've had a couple of situations recently where uh, charges came on my credit cards and alerts came to me uh, immediately in I'm real time. Ask you, do that and help? So, oh, yeah. Do that help uh, I was fraud able, and stuff like that? That, that really helped question. fraud. And it, and it has the, the service that I use has, I want to say, $500,000 or a million dollars towards fraud protection. Wow. But more importantly, I'm getting the inquiry on real time. I've been able to call a creditor on the spot and stop them from giving the product to the 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 uh, the uh, crook. So let me ask you a question: Can I can I get you back on another show? Sure, we got to do the Sequoia show anyway. We have we. Can you tell them briefly what it is? Uh, Sequoia is a platform that is loaning money to businesses and allowing you to buy. Uh, real estate, fix and flip, one to four investment units, hotels, shopping centers under their platform, and it does not require all the documentation that banks require. As a matter of fact, Sequoia's motto is when banks say no, we say yes. I like that. Roy put me down with that. I'm, so, I'm all happy and stuff. But listen, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week at 7 o'clock. And so we can go do some other things, okay? Peace. We out. Thanks. Good night.